We're in Minneapolis with Master Gardener Malia Maynard and today she's going to show us how to make a water garden in a container. Malia, I've always wanted a water garden in my yard, but I never had the energy to build one. I love this idea of keeping it small and just using a simple container. Tell me how you do that. Well, it's, it's pretty easy. You just need a few simple things and you can, once you have everything that you need, you can build it in 10 minutes. Oh, that's perfect. So what do you need? Well, you need a container, first of all. You can choose anything that's watertight that you like. This is just a simple galvanized tub that I bought at a local hardware store for about 30 bucks. Uh, but lots of other people like things that are more ornate. As long as it's watertight, that's perfectly fine. Um, you need a few bricks because you're going to need to vary the height of your plants. You're going to need to choose water plants. You choose plants for a water container just like you do for a regular container. You got your thriller chiller spiller thing going on where you okay. want something that's a focal point something that spills over the edges and then something that fills in the top okay great what else do you need uh, just two more things you're gonna need mosquito dunks so that your container doesn't become a breeding ground for mosquitoes and you need to feed your plants just like you would any other plant and they make aquatic plant food their pellets so wonderful. that they don't dissolve in the water wonderful great now how do you assemble this all right, let's get started. First thing you want to do is you, we just put the bricks in to get started. Uh, all di water plants like to be planted at different heights. So I know that this papyrus likes to be, you can tell by the tag, the papyrus is going to like to be above the water. Um, every plant tag will tell you exactly where this needs to be. The soil in this container should be three to four inches above the water line. Okay. Another benefit of buying these at an aquatic plant store locally is they go to great lengths to give you tags that explain where they should be in the water. This one is zero to four inches below the water level. So I've got these lower bricks for them. And as you can see, the parrot feather has these long uh, kind of ferny arms it's going to float on the top and fill the container over time. Oh, beautiful. So I have two of those and they've been in water, so they look a little slimy, but you won't really notice that once you fill your container. I'm just going to put this one over here. And then once we fill it, we'll spread the arms out. It will only take a few weeks for it to fill. Wonderful. And look really beautiful. Now over here, I've got water lettuce. They're floating plants. They'll float on top of the water. Another good choice is water hyacinth. We can put these in after we fill this with water. All right, great. All right, well, now that we've got the plants in and the water level where we want it to be, I'm just going to try to spread them out. This is just exactly what you'd do if you had a container that you were designing that was just soil based. And now we're going to add the water lettuce. We'll take these water lettuce and and one of the things you want to do with these just like you would any other plant is pull off foliage that's yucky toss it out you don't want that yellow diseased looking foliage in there got that these are floating plants so you want to place them last and you always want something that floats on the top it adds a lot of interest to the top of the container got a couple little baby stragglers here we'll just put those in that leaf looks a little bad. I'm going to rip that off, put that in. Water lettuce will spread quickly as well, filling in the container more than you're going to want. So if you have other friends with container gardens, give that away or um, you can toss it in your compost pile. Malia, what kind of maintenance is required? Not very much. These are really easy to take care of. The biggest thing is you need to keep your water level up. Um, I don't fill it all the way to the top because if you get a good hard rain, your plants can spill over the side and dry up on the sidewalk before you even notice. Just a little bit below the level, just grab your hose, fill it up whenever you can. If the hose isn't handy, just use a water pitcher or something, but do not use one that you have fertilizer like miracle Grow or something in like that because you're going to get algae from that nitrogen that you're, you don't want to be having that. Okay. We mentioned the mosquito dunks earlier. You're just going to put one of these in every 30 days. You can get these at any hardware store. I just tuck one under the brick, mark it on my calendar that it needs to be replaced. It's a safe biological way to kill mosquito larvae. It's just bacteria. It's harmless to other things besides mosquito larvae. And then in terms of exposure, this is obviously in a shady area. 
Uh, it'll get a little bit of sun, which I know this plant requires sun, and I know the lettuce likes a little bit shadier. So buy plants the same way you do for your regular garden? Yes. You want to you wanna focus on the sun needs, and I'm kind of playing it down the middle here because this area gets dappled light throughout the day. It'll be much brighter in this area at different parts. Mm -hmm. So some of these plants will get the sun they need while the lettuce should be protected from the bright sun. Beautiful. I love it. I'm going to run home and make one of these myself. I can't wait to get one in my garden. It's absolutely gorgeous.